In this video, I'm going to run through 10 of the best UK dividend stocks that you can find today on the FTSE 100, the UK index of the 100 largest companies based in the UK by market cap. It might not be the most exciting stock market in the world, especially when we compare it to the NASDAQ or the S&P 500, but it does have some really, really high paying dividend stocks that on average pay around double what the returns are of the S&P 500. So if you're looking for income, you're in the right place. To make it onto this list today, I'm going to have some tight criteria. One of the main ones is that you're going to have to grow your dividend consistently for the last 10 years, which excludes a huge number of companies. So all the companies that I'm talking about today have done this for a very, very long time. And this should be a good indicator to help us choose and make a good decision for our own portfolio if we want to add these ones. So there's no meme stocks here, I'm afraid, my fellow apes. I've also got different companies here from lots of different sectors, which should give you a good, well-balanced, diversified portfolio if that's what you're looking for. And I would hope it is as a long-term investor looking for both growth and dividends at the same time. If I own any of the stocks below I'll make sure you let you know for full transparency and at the end as well I'll also let you know some other dividend stocks I'm invested in which don't make the cut. Anyway without further ado let's get straight into the stocks. So in no particular order let's start with Diageo. Diageo's current dividend yield is 2%. They've had 22 years worth of dividend increases. That's one of the best on the FTSE 100 in terms of track record. 64% growth in capital over the last five years, which is a really, really nice, impressive growth in share price. Revenues of 11.75 billion and a net income of 1.45 billion. These guys own 200 different drinks brands and operate globally. Of course, just because they're headquartered out of the UK, listed on the London Stock Exchange, doesn't mean they necessarily do all of their business in the UK. As much as people love their Johnny Walker, Smirnoff and Guinness, these things are consumed around the world, which makes this player a really, really good investment. As the world opens up more and people have got more reason to celebrate, I can see this drinks giant doing some very, very big things. Having a huge amount of brands selling to so many different markets means that they're very well diversified and I can't see people stopping in consuming alcohol anytime soon. In number two, National Grid. This has a current yield of 5.47%. This is another long-term dominator of the dividend playing world, having more than 22 years worth of dividend growth. Unfortunately, we're 25% down on share price over the last five years, but a really solid company because this is a real household name here in the UK who operate both the electricity and gas networks and also have a small holding in part of the United States as well. Revenues for this company are £14.5 billion and their net income is £1.2 billion. In the utility sector, you typically can't go wrong. You're probably not going to see some amazing growth from companies like this, but regardless of global economic conditions, National Grid is probably going to be supplying electricity and gas for a long time to come. So it could be a safe place to put your money. Make sure you do all of your own research and make up your own mind. But this could be one to look at. In number three, the global household player that is Unilever. Here we have a current yield of 3.6%. This company, of course, won't need any introductions. It owns 400 different brands, all the way from Lynx deodorant, Wool's ice cream, and Hellman's mayonnaise. This is another stock that's increased dividends for 20 whole years. Over the last five years, we've had a share price increase of around 11%, 50 billion euros in revenue, and a massive 6 billion euros in net income. So these guys make a lot of profit. Because this company have got so many different consumer goods, everything from ice cream to deodorant, again, regardless of economic conditions and regardless of what happens in the wider stock market and the wider economy, lots of people are still going to be consuming these goods. If they want to smell good, or certainly if they want to treat themselves. Mmm, magnum ice creams. Might go and get one now. And for full disclosure, funny enough, this is one I actually hold in my portfolio at the moment, while I'm actually currently down on what I paid for it, but I'm in for the long run. Coming in at number four, again, in no particular order, is BAE Systems. These guys have a current yield of 4.24%. This is another giant in its industry. BAE Systems supplies and creates all kinds of machines for governments around the world. They're the largest defense contractor in Europe, and this also makes them the largest manufacturer based here in the UK. They have 17 years worth of dividend increases, share price up a modest 8% over the last five years, huge revenues of £19.28 billion with a net income of £1.37 billion. This space is a really interesting one of course, aerospace and defence. Typically you're selling to big governments who are spending a lot of money over a long long period of time so you're not just making those one-off sales, you're making those recurring payments for different services contracts too. And think about this, it would be a very expensive space to try and break into or create a new company. So this company have probably got a very very bright future ahead of them and a very very nice stable paying dividend too. So again, do your own research but this this one could be one to look into as part of a well diversified portfolio. In number five, United Utilities. They have a current yield of 4.43%. I know when I pay my water bill every month, the name on the top is United Utilities. 
and they get my money because they supply water and deal with wastewater here in the northwest of England. And with the way things are set up in the UK, you don't have a choice who you pay, they are responsible for the region and they have that franchise. They have revenues of £1.8 billion, they've had 10 years worth of dividend increases with a net income there of £106 million. Of course this is an interesting space, again like a lot of the things we've mentioned before, United Utilities, because of the space they operate in, because they look after the providing of water and wastewater, again, regardless of economic conditions, regardless of what we're doing at home or away, ultimately this industry is going to be here to stay. And if anything, as more people probably move to the north because they're sick of London, they're probably going to see their profits rise and increase. It's a heavily regulated space. It's a heavily stable space. I can't see these guys going anywhere at all. And they could make up a very, very stable part of anyone's dividend growth portfolio. Also, that reminds me, stay hydrated, especially if you live in the Northwest, you get very nice, super soft water. Mmm, delicious. In number six, British American Tobacco. These guys have a current yield of 7.8%. What a whopper. Now, I've held this stock before, mainly because I was attracted to that monstrous dividend, but I sold out a while ago to focus more on growth and index investing. As the name suggests, the company deals with all things combustible and also in the new areas of e-cigarettes and vapes. It will still make most of its money from the dirty stuff, so if you want to avoid this industry, then investing in this one might not be for you. However, if we look at this purely from a financial perspective, we've had 21 years worth of dividend growth, the share price is down 46% over the last five years, revenue is still extremely strong at £25 billion, and net income is a whopping £6.5 billion. So this one can potentially be slightly controversial because of course the sector that it's in, a lot of its customers of course haven't really got a choice of what they do. They are trying to transition into that non-combustible space, but the majority of their income is still gonna come from people smoking and taking up the habit. So this is an interesting one. High dividends, they make a lot of profit, but is the share price only gonna continue going down one way? Who knows? Difficult one to say here, but very, very high yield. So potentially looking for income in the short term? Could be a good one. In number seven, DCC. They've got a current yield of 2.55%. Now I hadn't heard much about DCC before I really looked into this one, but then actually the more I looked into it, the more I realized that I actually knew a lot of the brands they looked after, or I dealt with them before in my sector I actually work in, and they've paid their dividend for the past 22 years. So they're one of the most reliable players on this list. So they operate across multiple sectors like healthcare, technology, oil and gas, and they own brands like Certas, who look after you know moving around oil and gas in the industry, and actually, funny enough, I even look after a technology distributor who I've actually done business with before at one of my former companies. So they'd stock all kinds of things like PCs, servers, laptops, you name it. So they're extremely well diversified business, it seems. Share price, although, is down 11% over the last five years. So not a particularly well growing company, but revenue is £14 billion. Net income is £250 million. So not the most profitable, so clearly some very, very tight margins there. They do have the benefit of being well diversified here and a relatively stable dividend of 2.5% is nothing to be sniffed at. In number eight, Sage Group. They've got a current yield of 2.45%. Now you've probably heard of these guys if you live in the UK and this company produces software and helps businesses do some of the most boring tasks of all that no one likes doing and that's taxes and accounting. And they've got customers all around the world. They've been running for 40 years, headquartered in the great city of Newcastle, where I actually went to university. Over the last five years, the share price is down 3.2%. Revenue is 1.9 billion pounds. Net income is 310 million pounds. The company's got a very strong balance sheet and a great record of paying out dividends with more than 21 years in a row of consistent growth. Now, this could be a really interesting one to invest in. Clearly a company with a great track record. However, a word of caution, of course, because this space is seeing a lot of disruption from new players who were born in the cloud and born in the mobile age, trying to disrupt this legacy software provider and trying to make it very, very easy for small companies and big companies alike to do all of their taxes and accounting. So it's gonna be really interesting over the next few years to see how new companies emerge and some of the old guard potentially fall away. But still, nonetheless, a very reliable dividend payer. And in number nine, Relx or RELX or however you want to say it, R-E-L-X, up to you. They have a current dividend yield of 2.21%. Now this is another company I didn't know a huge amount about before I looked into it a bit more. They've got a long history of paying dividends and growing over the last 10 years. Wait for it now, we're into some growth period here. 49% share price increase over the last five years, a revenue of seven billion pounds and a very healthy net income of 1.2 billion pounds. Now, according to their website, they operate in 40 different countries with customers in over 180, and they provide technical, medical, and legal information and analytics. And also, they do own a few other companies, and the one I definitely heard of before was a company called Reed Exhibitions, who of course organize some big industry events. 
Now, with that rise in the share price over the last five years, that does seem to suggest there's a lot of confidence in this company here from investors, and no doubt they've got a very strong economic moat if they've had a share price growth like that for the last five years. And it certainly helps being a parent company to lots of different other companies in different sectors because it gives you a bit more of a diversified portfolio and means that you don't have to rely on one sector doing really, really well. Anyway, this could be one worth doing a lot more research into. Let me know in the comments below if you've actually owned this one because this is not one I've owned before. And finally, number 10, last but not least, Croda International. This has a current yield of just 1.12%, I'm afraid. So you're gonna need to have a substantial holding for this one to pay your mortgage. But it has been growing its dividend for the last 21 years, making it one of the most prestigious names on this list. More importantly though, regardless of that yield, the share price has grown by 137% over the last five years. So really with a growth like that, you could just pay your own dividends and make your own return every single month. This company is a chemicals provider who supplies into a huge range of industries, which means it doesn't rely on one sector for income. These include industries like healthcare, personal care, as well as industrial chemicals and additives, all essential for these industries to survive. Revenue is 1.39 billion, and the net income from that is a healthy 201 million pounds. And more importantly, as I just mentioned, 137% share price growth over the last five years is nothing to be sniffed at. And as I mentioned at the beginning, I would say I'd add a few more companies on the list here, just so you're aware of the ones I currently own in my portfolio or any biases I might have as well. So the companies I've currently got in my portfolio include Evraz, BP, Legal and General, and Unilever. Now Touchwood, they've all performed pretty well as well as paying high dividends, but they didn't make it onto this list because I wanted to make sure that you had to have 10 years worth of consecutive dividend growth. Anyway, I really hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments section below if you currently own any of these stocks, where you see the growth going potentially for the next 10, 20 years, where you currently are and where your mind's at with these. Are you selling any? Are you buying some more of any? I'll be really interested to see your thoughts. Let me know down below. Drop me a like if you found the video useful. Subscribe for many more and I'll see you in the next one. Happy investing.